Welcome to the Art Lady's Home and today I'm going to talk about my kitchen island. Absolutely love this island and I'm so glad that I built a nice big one so that all of my family and friends can gather around. That is the center point of the kitchen and actually the home. Uh, when we have our family gatherings, it's not the dining room anymore, it's the kitchen island. And I want to tell you how I did this. First of all, the measurements are 72 inches long by 26 inches wide. And that's including the face boards and the cupboard doors and drawers. Um, the first cabinet over here is a, and it's located very close to the sink. I'll show you right here. Oh, sink. Um, this cabinet is a pull-out garbage bin. And I designed that with two different uh, sizes. One is for recyclable garbage bags, the small bag grocery bags that I like to recycle. And the other one is uh, just standard trash bags and a standard size garbage pail. Um, I have a tutorial on how I did that, uh, if you're interested in the pull-out bin. The next, um, and then of course, smaller drawers on top. And that this is 21 inches wide. Um, I believe, yes, 21 inches wide. The middle uh, sections are three drawers and they house my Tupperware and the top drawer houses dishcloths. It's close to the sink and there I have my dishcloths. Um, the next is a cabinet and I, I designed this so that it would balance the two large cabinet doors on each side, the small drawers, in the 21 inch on this side um, balance and then in this cabinet I use this for uh, a dog food container so that's why I had two cabinets in this island one is a large face cabinet door for the garbage bin and the other for the dog food and otherwise I would have just had all drawers if I didn't need these large bins I also had the cabinet maker build me the shelf in case for future use. I didn't need the garbage. I mean, I mean, hello. I didn't need this giant dog food bin. So I have that shelf there in case I want to turn it into a cabinet with a shelf. Here's my big beasties right here. I know. I know. Um, again, uh, this is... Uh, 26 inches wide. The wood, the, the doors are almost an inch wide. These right here, the space of the cabinet. And then on the back side of the cabinet is a, a almost inch wide because when they plane the wood, it's supposed to be an inch, but by the time they plane it, it ends up smaller. So that's almost an inch wide here and that's the face of the cabinet. And that's a sheet of plywood. Um, some kind of fancy birch or something plywood that's been stained. Um, nice quality and I think he also puts a veneer piece on the top of that as well. So that's the dimensions of the cabinets. On each end I have um, some very thin fancy trim in the cabinet shop. He runs uh, these thin pieces of wood through a machine to make his own trim. And I was able to pick which kind of trims that I wanted. And so he kind of framed out this end so it wouldn't be a plain box area. Uh, a plain area of the side. I want a little bit more decorative. And then on the front of the cabinet, I have two corbels. And I have a centerpiece decorative. The centerpiece decorative came from Outwater Plastics. Um, a really, really great company that has very inexpensive everything to do with kitchens. Great place to check out. Here's the center. This is called a drop onlay, and it's of uh, carved roses and ribbon. I also have in the corners um, some corner pieces here for trim. And then, of course, he takes that molding and makes a decorative frame around it. This design wasn't exactly what I wanted um, when I went to the cabinet shop to help build this. Uh, my brother built the cabinets with me 
And when I went there for designing, I left my plans. I had planned out all my designs and what I wanted, and I totally forgot, and I left them at home, so we messed up a little bit on this design here. And we kind of did it last minute as we were trying to figure it out, and by that time, I had been working in the shop all day, uh, the cabinet shop, trimming and um, staining and glazing, and I was just so tired and exhausted, I just said, okay, that's good, good, good enough. We can just go with that. But I ended up wanting something a little bit more decorative, but I was, um, it was acceptable for me. Um, these corbels um, are used, and basically you really need a corbel if you're gonna go out beyond 12 inches on your granite. If you are going out, uh, like for example, these overhangs here are six inches. Um, the granite company cut six and a quarter, just to make sure, uh, but it's, um, I ordered six inches and uh, we do, you don't need any kind of brace or support if it's beyond um, 12. So the corbels are kind of decorative. They do serve a little bit of a purpose because of the 12 inch, but the guy said at the granite company, I really didn't need anything. Um, if that's, that's what I recall. Um, anything beyond 12 inches though, is it's necessary to have some kind of a support. So basically just decorative. But when I do corbels, um, and this is important, when you do your corbels, you, you wanna make sure that it's substantial enough for your piece. You don't want them to be oh, too large. I've seen overly large corbels on islands that do not look good. And then I've also seen, which is almost uh, more often, I see corbels that are too small. I think the people want to do things cheap, so they make small corbels. And it, your, your corbels have to balance the piece. Um, and I think that this kind of blends and balances well, for at least for my taste. But my corbels are, let me see if I can give you the size. I know they're 14 inches long. Um, they're six inches wide, and at the top, they are four inches sticking out, and then the widest belly of that corbel is, goes to five inches. Um, and so that's the corbels. Uh, the corbels are, are wood, carved wood. Um, all the pieces I have on here are carved wood. I do have in my kitchen a piece of resin that I use over my cooktop. Uh, for choosing, I choose wood. I would prefer the, the carved wood look over the resin anytime. I think it takes the stain much better. If you're spraying and glazing, then you could use your, your resin or your plastic corbels um, and plastic pieces. That's okay, but for staining, I really, really think that the wood is better. And when you're purchasing the wood corbels and onlays, um, the wood makes a difference if you're staining. The softer the wood, the darker the corbel will be for stain um, or the wood piece you're choosing. Um, the lighter the wood piece, uh, um, the harder the wood is, the, it doesn't take stain as much as the dark. So you're better with more of your harder woods and most of, some of, well, some of the time, the harder woods are more expensive. So you can kind of tell by that, but call the people you're ordering from if you're going to be staining and make sure it's a hardwood for stain. And, so, and sometimes in the descriptions, it'll tell you whether the corbels and wood onlays and pieces are, um, are able to accept stain or not, or are suitable for stain. I think that's what they say they are. Um, and then others say paintable, you know, suitable for painting. So if it's, if you're going to be doing just a plain white kitchen or a gray kitchen, those are the ones that you can go for, the, the, um, the ones that are just suitable for painting. But if you're staining, you need more of a hard wood and, and you want your woods to be compatible so that the colors are similar. Otherwise, what you end up with, and I'll show you because I only could get it in this wood. I could not get it in a different kind of wood. Otherwise you get, and you can see the different colorations. The swan was in a soft wood. I mean, you know, not, not balsa soft, but it was in a softer wood. And so what happens is, is the, the, the wood sucks in the stain 
and causes it to be very dark. And I was really careful and tried to mix down that stain a little bit. It still ended up staining real dark. So you wanna make sure you match your hard, hardness of the woods. And um, my brother built these cabinets out of, I believe it was a birch plywood. That's what I wanna say. Um, when I find out, I'll put it in the description of the cabinets, but it was a finished, I'll show you on the insides here. It's a finished on one side. Actually, I'll pull the wood up. This is a double sided for the shelves. Here's the plywood. It's finished. It's finished on one side when he, that's what he made the cabinets out of. Finished on one side and the other side it was unfinished. When he did the shelves, these are finished on both sides. Um, but it, this, this is a beautiful product and I was happy with this color for the insides of my cabinets. Um, then he didn't have to spray paint them or do anything to it and it was done. Um, but that's what he made the boxes out of and basically these cabinets are just a square box and then of course you fit your drawers or your or your cupboard doors on um, but you can look up tutorials on how to build these things but building them at home is not that difficult um, you just need the proper tools um, when I decide designed this um, if you're going to design your own or you're gonna build your own some things to think about are your edgings and when I had to choose this, I had to choose the cuts that he was going to be using. If you look here, this is not squared off. Of course, your drawers can be squared off. Um, but this, I had an option of, of, of what kind of cut I wanted here. Um, I think they call it router. He used a router to route. route. And actually, he ran it through a machine, but it's similar to a router. And it does some fancy cuts here. And then my cabinets are um, on the inside. There is a, another piece of cabinet here to show another dimension that he ran it through um, another kind of a machine. Um, but like, so, like I said, if you're building them at home, you can simply just take a router and route, it, route your, your edges here. Um, and I think that's about it for the cabinet base. Um, now I'm going to talk to you about the cabinet. I mean the the top of this, the countertop, the, the granite countertop piece. Um, when I designed this, um, I actually went to the granite yard and um, we talked about edging. And I taught you a little bit about the overhangs. On each end, I had this overhang uh, six inches, like I said before. It's actually cut to six and a uh, hair over six and a quarter or hair under six and a quarter. Um, and I designed it so that it could be um, with seating on both ends. And I determined that six inches was adequate enough for end seats if, if I needed them for guests. The main seating is in the front with a 12 inch overhang. Um, and that's a nice overhang for sitting, eating, dining. When you're picking out your granite, of course, you pick out your kinds of ends and my um, the way you want your your cuts to be on your end. Mine is called a bull nose and it's just a half bull nose where it's rounded at the top and then it's flat here at the bottom. Um, they mix and match. It's 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 nice to do your island and a little bit nicer or, you know, a little bit more expensive cut than the plane. I mean, it just draws attention to that island. And then the rest of my cabinets I did with a standard bevel. It's just a basically a squared off end with a cut um, uh, on the top. So it's not so square. But mix and match if you want to. It's more custom that way. Um, and what I did is when I picked out this piece of granite, this is the piece when I saw it at the granite yard that I wanted for my island. I picked the best piece and then it has this gorgeous vein of almost transparent, it's hard to see in the film, quartz. And I wanted this quartz vein to be centered on the uh, bump out of my island. You can kind of see how it's a little bit of a curve here. And then my ends come around. This forms the design right here on the corner around the corbel. And then my ends bump out 
the six inch curve and then my back edge here where it meets up against my sink is flat um, at first I thought this design on down on paper it didn't look good but then I saw something similar to it in the store in the granite shop and I really liked it and then I just tweaked it and designed my corbels my my curves here on the ends and then what I did and I mean don't be afraid to be you know aggressive at the granite shop pushy whatever you want to call it but I, t I said, I want to be there. I want to see it. I want to see what it looks like when you make your sketch on the granite. I want to see where, where the colors are going to line up. I mean, I am very picky, especially being an artist. When I picked this out, I envisioned this seam or this piece of, of quartz coming down right near my bump out the way it is. And when they were going to cut it, when I went for one check, I went, I kept on going back to check to make sure everything was going right. And they actually had that seam in a different place on my, on my counter, um, on the island. And I said, no, I want that right on my bump out. I mean, so you can be specific. Remember, this is your kitchen, your granite. And I mean, it's, you, you know, you're paying a pretty penny for this. So you can demand and say, I want it to be this way. You know, and sometimes they say, well, it can't be, it can't be against the grain or something crazy like that. But, you know, who knows? But I'm just saying, don't be afraid to speak up and say, can we do it this way instead? Because, um, you know, they're there to serve you and make you happy. And, and they did. They just flipped it. You know, this was almost going to be cut off. And I said, no, you know, make, so make sure you, you are clear with the granite people that I want it this way, or I want this color to face this way. And um, in, in most of the cases, they're gonna be happy with, uh, you know, with making the changes. It's no big deal to them if it's upside down or which way it is. Now, sometimes it does matter about the green and the flow, if the two pieces are coming together in the cabinet, in the countertops. For example, you can see right here where my veins are, right here. So sometimes they say, well, I need, they need this piece to be next to this piece, that kind of thing. But when it came to the island, I specifically wanted that to be in a certain way and they were happy to give that to me. Um, but that's a little bit of how I went about designing my kitchen island. And I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, my little adventure. <laughs>